Hi everybody! Thanks so much for joining me today for another Animal of the Alphabet from Catchy Cartoons. Today's letter is I, and I is for this elegant but fun and easy to draw Impala. So let's get started. We'll begin our rough drawing by sketching a fairly small circle for his head. Let's give our Impala two big eyes, placed on either side of the circle, at about the halfway point, and then sketch in the irises. For the muzzle, we'll rough in a narrow, cone-like shape, about the same depth as the circle. Add a centre line through both shapes to use as a guide for the facial features. Sketch in a fairly big nose, and a little smile, just above the chin. Now let's give him two big leaf-like ears, starting just above the eyes and extending straight out from either side of the head. Take note as well how one ear is slightly higher than the other, as we are always looking for opportunities to add some asymmetry into our drawings to give them life and personality. Perhaps he's waggling his ears. <laughs> add another similar shape, only smaller this time, for the insides of the ears. Now let's give him a pair of elegantly shaped spiral horns. In fact, they're often described as lyre shaped. If you're not familiar, a lyre is a classical stringed musical instrument, which these horns really do resemble. <laughs> Minus the strings, of course. Okay, ready? Starting at the center line in the middle of the head, we'll angle the line out by about 45 degrees. A quick turn inwards, continuing the line up at about 60 degrees. <laughs> Hope you've got a protractor handy. <laughs> if not, just follow me. Finish the horn with a very gentle curve back out and up to the top. On the way down, we'll roughly follow the same angles, but getting progressively thicker as we approach the base of the horn by the ear. Simply repeat the process for the other horn, but just like the ears, a touch of asymmetry here would be a good thing. So don't simply duplicate the first horn, as this could look unnatural. Let's give him a fairly long neck and a rather boxy body that's flat along the back, but then nicely rounded through the underside. Sketch in a centre line through the chest and neck to use as a guide when placing the legs. Impalas are graceful and agile animals that can leap up to 30 feet in length and up to 10 feet high. Wow! So, we'll need to give this guy long, slender legs, specially made for jumping. We'll start by taking a line straight down from his bottom, out to the hock, and in as we move down to the hoof. Back up, following the same angles, until we reach the knee, where we'll then angle the line away from his backside as we create his thigh. And then repeat for the other back leg, but raising this one slightly at the hoof and the hock to illustrate perspective, as this leg is further away from us, on the other side of his body. For the front legs, we'll indicate some muscles through the shoulder to the elbow with a gentle curve. Then take the line straight down to the foot, where we'll use a little outward jaunt to create the hoof. Angle the line back up to the ankle, and then straight up, finishing the shoulder area with another gentle curve. <laughs> it looks just like a chicken drumstick. Again, repeat for the other leg, but remembering what we just learned from the back legs, to raise the hoof just a little bit to suggest again that this leg is on the other side of his body. We'll knock in a couple of loose circles for his knobbly knees. Let's rough in a flap-shaped tail, which he can move up or down to send signals to all the other impalas. And quickly indicate the tops of the hooves. We'll finish our rough by lightly sketching in his distinctive markings, which although attractive, are actually crucial to an impala's very survival. This is where reference photos come in really handy, as you can use them to study the correct placement of details like these. Now we can move on to the tie-down stage, where we'll adjust and refine the shapes and forms as we bring this impala to life. We'll start by making the eyes a touch bigger to make him more appealing and indicate the eyelids by making the line thicker at the top. 
Even though I'm quite happy with the rough, let's keep loose as we lay down the tie-down line, as we're still searching for the right shapes and forms, and this kind of exploration helps us understand where we will ultimately commit to our final line work. I think the muzzle could be a bit narrower, and let's define that smile and nose a little. And finally, just pop in the philtrum. Wait, what's that I hear you say? Philtrum? <laughs> well, if you're interested, why not take a look at my German Shepherd video where we go in depth about the philtrum. <laughs> we'll streamline the shape of the horns, again making them thicker at the base and then tapering them to a nice point at the top. We'll quickly draw in some ridges, suggesting the spiralling nature of the horns. In reality, these ridges are very thick and prominent, so be sure to wrap the lines around the horns to give a sense of volume, and even overlapping a few of them ever so slightly for a sense of three-dimensionality. Let's add some detail to the inner ears now, with yet more leaf-like shapes, but this time a little more detailed, like an oak leaf. We'll darken the color separation lines for his facial markings. Now, normally, this is one of the last things that I would do, but with the added detail in the horns and the ears, it just felt natural to work on the markings as well. And it adds some life to the Impala's face, which can be very encouraging as you see your drawing coming to life as you work. Let's bang down the neck. I'm tying down the base of the neck as well as a reminder to think of the form and how the neck sits on the body. I'm liking his underside. <laughs> oh yes, that's a nice well-rounded tummy. But I'm thinking that the body is a bit too big, so we'll just use this center line for the top of his back instead. A simple transition from the back into the tail, refining the shape a little while we're there and another simple transition from the back down through the back of his leg. I'm liking the clean graphic shapes of the back legs. We'll just make a subtle angle change to the front of the hooves and make sure that the legs are the same thickness. Now, in regards to the hind legs, those of you who have been with me before know how much I really discourage the use of parallel lines, except in some very particular circumstances. Well, looks like I haven't been taking my own advice, because these lower legs look pretty darn parallel to me. <laughs> but I do have my reasons. Doing this exaggerates the rigidity of his long, spindly legs, which he often kicks out together as he leaps, the two legs virtually becoming one, in fact. Here, the parallel lines can be justified to emphasise the parallel action of the legs. And there's also that very subtle change of angle at the hooves, which is now much more easily discernible. So as you can see, as with most things, there are always exceptions to the rules, even ones I make for myself, apparently. <laughs> His front legs are looking a bit too thick from the shoulder area to the knees, so we'll just thin them out as they should be spindly as well. And it creates contrast with those knobbly knees of his. Make sure that the legs are the same thickness and to keep the hooves nice and dainty. We'll just clarify all four hooves and then let's take a bit more time now to clearly define the remainder of his markings on his body and tail. By all means, checking your reference photos again if you need to and then we'll take a little break before moving on to the second tie down stage. So how are we all doing? I think our Impala is in really good shape, but if there's anything that's bothering you about your drawing, be sure to make those fixes now. This way you'll have a really solid foundation as we move on to the next stage of the process. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like button, and while you're there, why not subscribe to my channel as well? The next stage is the second tie-down, where we'll define the line with some polishing and apply a darker and more committed line. Let's start with the eyes, making sure that they're just right and that the thicker eyelids read well. We'll apply a darker line to the ears and the head, shave a tiny bit off the muzzle, thicken up the mouth so that the expression reads better and makes the chin a touch smaller. We'll make the nose a bit bigger, 
nail down the inner ears, and commit to the horns, taking care to maintain that distinctive lyre shape. Let's make sure that the back end is nice and tidy, as we want a smooth transition from the back, through his backside, and all the way down the leg, and then back up again. For the most part, his front legs are looking good, although his knees and hooves are looking a touch soft, particularly that screen right hoof, so we'll just tighten all those things up. We'll darken any ridge lines through the horns that may be looking a bit weak, then commit to the colour separation lines for the markings on his face, leg and tail. Finally, we'll add some tone to differentiate his markings so things are clearer in the clean-up and colour stages. Clean-up is the final stage of the drawing process. This is where we apply our clean and final line, which sets the tone for the style of the drawing. We'll apply a fairly standard line for his eyes, but thicker along the top to indicate the lids, and then a nice thin line for the irises and highlights. With this impala being more graphic in design, we'll apply a slightly thicker line than the typical traditional one. The line will be thickest through most of the straights and will taper to a thin through most of the bends and as the line enters the interior of the drawing. I want the line along the back legs to be fairly thick as it will give the impression of strength and rigidity in the lower legs. But let's break up the thick line of the front legs with a thin line at the knees. This adds some contrast and it also gives a sense of those knobbly joints stretching the flesh around them. The interior lines will be thin, with the exception of the facial features, so that they won't have to fight for attention with the exterior line work. Let's clean up the tail, creating a really nice shape. And then finally, the markings, using that nice, thin line. And now we're ready for the colour stage. We'll start by giving the Impala a nice tan for the base colour. Once we finish the colour, you'll notice that the tie-down drawing is still visible. I'm doing this today because I sometimes like the look of seeing the working drawing in the finished product as I feel it provides a life and vitality to the image and maintains that human touch. But if you think it looks messy and prefer a cleaner image, just hide, erase or paint over the top of your tie down and rough drawings as I often do as well. It's all personal preference and how you feel on the day and today I'm feeling a bit messy. <laughs> For his markings and ears, we'll use brown and cream. A deep brown for his eyes, and a purpley grey blue for the antlers and hooves. Is purpley grey blue even a colour? <laughs> well, whatever it is, it certainly does look nice with the warm tans and browns. And there you have it. You've just drawn this very leggy impala. To see more from my Animals of the Alphabet series, have a look at this video. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye!